Welcome to another episode of r slash let's not meet. Had an incredibly frightening experience last night and wanted to know if anyone here has ever had a similar encounter. So last night, I was at a classmate's house working on a group project we have due tomorrow. I live in an apartment in the town where our university is located and my classmate lives at his parents house which is in the foothills just outside of town. In order to get to the house, you have to drive along a relatively secluded and narrow two-lane road for about 5-6 miles. We started working on the project at about 6pm and I ended up hanging around for a while after we had finished our working. So I left his house pretty late at about 11 and started down the road back towards town. I didn't realize how tough it would be to navigate the road at night. There were no street lights and the road was unkept and riddled with potholes. On top of this, I had no cell service so I had to drive very slowly to make sure I didn't blow out one of my tires since I had used my spare a couple of weeks back. I figure I was about 3 miles from the house when I rounded a tight corner and saw a pickup truck with a camper shell parked diagonally across the road. The manner in which it was parked completely impeded my path and I couldn't drive around it because there was a gully on both sides of the road. The only way for me to go at this point was backward, where there was a putoff that I could use to turn my car around. At first I couldn't see inside the cab, but when I turned on my high beams I saw that there was a man slouched over in the driver's seat, his head resting against the steering wheel as if he had been knocked out after a bad accident. I immediately sensed something was wrong. The way his car had just coincidentally come to rest in a position that totally blocked the road was a big red flag for me. I had heard stories of people playing dead in the road as a way to lure unsuspecting people out of their cars so they could rob them. I decided duck this shit and elected to go back to my classmate's house and explain what was going on. I threw the car into reverse and kept my eyes darting back and forth between my rear view and the truck. I looked and saw that I was almost to the pull of where I could turn around. When I looked back, my heart skipped about 5 beats. The man who had been slouched over in the driver's seat was now walking at my car at a hurried pace while a few other men jumped out of the camper shell and started moving towards me as well. I panicked and accelerated backwards into the pull-off, which messed up the undercarriage of my car pretty bad. As I put it into drive the guy was already at my passenger side door tugging on the handle which, thank the lord, was locked. I only caught a brief glimpse of him but his face appeared to be scabbed and leathery. Definitely a meth head or some sort of drug abuser. I sped away and didn't slow down at all until I reached the house, constantly checking my rear view to see if they were following. Thankfully they didn't tell me, and when I reached the house I explained what had happened to my classmates and we called the cops. I was grateful that my buddy's parents were kind enough to let me stay the night. They didn't find anyone on the road matching the description but I filed an incident report and they told me they would be on the lookout for similar vehicles and suspicious activity. But holy shit. I'm still so shook up over it. I keep getting the same adrenaline rush I got when I saw the guy charging me whenever I think about it. Please share similar experiences you've had. As I would appreciate a good read or a good discussion to help clear my headspace. I've heard tons and tons of stories like this from people I know in real life and a lot of them on reddit. I really suggest you go out and get yourself a dash cam that records in HD and is fairly good in low light conditions they range anywhere from like $50 to a couple of hundred. It's worth the investment if you can afford it. Just last weekend my husband and I were driving back from my sister's house with our three kids in the back seat. It was dark, and as we have recently moved cities I plugged our new address into the GPS for help getting home. It took us on some back roads, which isn't a big deal for a country girl like me, but we reached a stretch of nothing and it was pitch black, no houses or lights around. There was a car that had been driving a little ahead of us for several minutes and suddenly it started speeding up, slowing down, basically yanking our chain. Then another car pops up behind us and starts tailing us so closely that his headlights disappeared in my mirror. My husband told me to pull over ASAP as both of us had a bad feeling. As soon as saw side road, I made an abrupt turn, forcing the car behind me to miss it. Both cars sped off. It was weird and made me feel creeped out for the rest of the ride. Never forget your vehicle is a weapon. Military training. I call it utilizing the ancient Japanese art of Toyota. In my case, Nissan. I heard many variations of this, 
one being a man laying in the road like he had been in a hit and run or something, with other men hiding in the bushes, another is a baby car seat in the road with a blanket over it, another is a fake cop car trying to get you to pull over in a deserted spot for no reason. I read a story here a while ago where a woman said she driving late at night. A cop car approached her and waved her to pull over even though she wasn't doing anything wrong. She decided to keep driving until she came to her populated gas station to pull into. Cop car sped off so she called them to find out why she had been asked to pull over but they told her they didn't have any units out that night. So scary that these things actually happen. My experience was not even close to as scary as yours but I had an experience where I forgot to lock my door. A few years ago I was driving out of my neighborhood where I came upon a guy who motioned for me to roll down my window. It looked like he was looking for something so I assumed he maybe had lost his dog. Because I'm a trusting jackass. I pull up and roll down my window enough to speak to him. He introduces himself. Asks my name. And then he opens the door and gets in my car and locks the door. I immediately noted that he had developmental delays. I ask him to please get out of the car and he tells me no. It felt like ice running in my veins because he was a lot taller and a lot heavier than me. I ask him again and tell him that I need to leave. He then gets out of the car. I lock the door, rolled up the window, and sped the duck out of there. He obviously didn't want to hurt me but it scared me how stupid and trusting I had been in the moment. Always try 911 on your phone regardless of service. Your phone carrier might not provide service but another might have coverage and 911 calls supersede carrier limitations. Edit spelling cause you know mobile and I suck at it in general. A lot of people don't know this. People come to my work all the time to buy a phone with the cheapest plan just to call 911 in an emergency. You don't even need a service plan to call 911. Your phone doesn't even need a SIM card or to be registered. I had a similar experience and I am a man. I was taking a break from truck driving and driving Uber around my area. I had dropped off a fare late at night in a community off of a main road. There was an exit that was surrounded by heavy landscaping plants. When I was leaving and got to the exit, there was an SUV parked almost blocking the road with its emergency flashes on. There was someone slumped over the wheel. I had just enough room to pull up beside the car and I rolled down my window and shouted to the person if he was alright. Well this looked to be a guy in his 20s. When I asked him if he was alright, he lifted his head and said he thought he was having a heart attack. I had my phone in my hand and just dialed 911. He heard me talking to 911 and shouted we don't need them. I'm feeling better and threw his car into gear and took off. I pulled out in the main road because I did not want to hang around where all that heavy foliage was in case someone was hiding in there. I was still in the line with 911 and they took it very seriously. I gave them a description of the SUV. I did not get his tag when he left because his lights were off. I was told they were going to send a bunch of patrol cars to the area but I figured he was long gone. In thinking about it though, I always wondered what he thought I was going to do when he said he was having a heart attack but call 911. I'm not a doctor. What else is someone going to do in that situation? The man on my patio. Warning. Long post. But I recommend you to read it all. Okay. So this happened when I was around 9 years old, 25 now, and it's something I will never forget. It gives me goosebumps to this day. I live in a terraced house, 4 houses combined, and my neighbors and I each have our own little patio. There's a small row 10 meters from my yard where people do their Sunday walks and so on. Only a small fence separates my small yard and patio from that road. I live in a pretty crowded area, with several of these terraced houses spread around in my neighborhood. So seeing people walking on that road is pretty normal for me. Seeing random people standing on my patio is not. When I was 9 I usually got home from school about an hour before my mom got home from work. I live maybe 50 meters away from school so my mom figured I was mature enough to be home alone for around an hour before she got home. This one day I got home from school. I did the usual thing which was to make sure I locked the front door. And double check that the back door leading to the patio was also locked. I was 9. Being alone was a little scary even though it was in the middle of the day and only for one hour. I then rushed to my room upstairs to play as much PlayStation as possible before my mom came home and made me do homework. While playing, I heard this noise coming from outside my window. 
My room was located one floor over the patio, with a view to the road I told you about before. It was kinda like the sound of a cat, but my cat had been missing for over 3 months. Hope sparked and I thought omg, did he finally come back? I ran downstairs to check if it was my cat, but the sight that met me gives me goosebumps just writing this. There was a guy standing on my patio, a tall guy with black hair covering half of his eyes, making him look like a male version of the ring women or something. I could hear him making high pitched sounds, almost like a cat meowing. A brown liquid was running down from his mouth, and I could see him spitting out my dad's stomped cigarettes. He was actually eating from the ashtray. I was frozen observing this, eventually snapped out of it and screamed so loud that the man must have heard it. He didn't react. He kept on eating from the ashtray. I ran upstairs to my room, locked the door and called my mom who then called the cops. I've never been more terrified in my life, laying in bed under my sheets, shivering with fear, as I hear these creepy high pitched noises from the guy eating cigarette stomps from the ashtray on my patio. I kinda blacked out for a moment, because the next thing I remember is the police arriving on the road by my yard. I hear them talking to the guy saying stuff like what are you doing, get over here or we will come down and arrest you and so on. He didn't respond, but the high pitched sounds was more frequent and louder. I decided to look through the window, feeling safe now that the cops were there. I could see two police officers standing by my fence, one man and a woman. I did not see the creepy man however, because he was standing directly one story under me and my field of view. The police jumped the fence, and I remember hearing the creepy guy screaming louder than anything I've ever heard before. He charged the female police officer with full force, and he ducking knocked her out cold. The male officer then immediately tased the guy, leaving him shaking on the ground, screaming still. The policeman struggled to keep him on the ground while putting handcuffs on him, but eventually made it. After a while he managed to wake up the female police officer, who seemed to be badly hurt. He called for backup and an ambulance, and then he sees me standing in the window above him. The expression on my face must have been something else, because he just looked at me and said I sure as hell hope you didn't see all that I started to cry. By this time neighbors started to arrive wondering what the hell was going on. One of my neighbors, an elderly woman, made me come down and she took care of me until my mom came back home. The police took the creepy guy with them in the car and left. Before they left they promised to come back and talk to us about what had happened. This is where the story takes an unexpected turn. The male police officer came back later that night and sat down with me and my mom to talk. He explained that the guy on my patio was actually diagnosed with severe autism. He had escaped a facility where mentally challenged people lived, located around 5 kilometers from where I live. He explained that the guy had actually been living in my house 5 years ago but he had been forced to move when his mom, his only caretaker, died. The poor guy probably thought he would find his mom in my house. He missed the routines and he missed living there with his mom. The police had to move him from the house that time 5 years ago, because he was extremely strong. From what I heard he had extreme tensions in the body because of the autism, making his muscles grow stronger and stronger throughout the years this was the reason he reacted the way he did when the police came this day. Still frightened I told the police officer that he needed to make sure this would never happen again. He promised it wouldn't. After a few sleepless nights my life got back to normal. The years went by and the guy didn't come back. Until one year ago. At this time my mom and dad had moved out. I bought the house from them and I'm still living there today. I was enjoying my morning coffee on the patio when I see this random guy stopping on the road by my fence. He just stands there, looking at me. I look at him and give him a nod. And then I hear the high pitched noises. Holy shit it's him his hair had turned grey but the high pitched sounds made me realize. My heart started racing and I instantly remembered the reason why he was back. I realized that he must have managed to escape again. Because I kept my cool a bit longer than when was 9. I started to realize how sorry I felt for the guy. 16 years later and he was back to look for his mom. I decided to carefully ask him if he wanted to come down to the patio. He instantly jumped the fence. I started to think he would knock me out like he did to that police officer. He didn't. He smiled. He looked at me and smiled. I offered him to sit down. He didn't respond. I offered him to come inside. He started laughing. We went inside. His face lit up. 
pure joy. He was home. It reminded him of the life he had with his mom. It almost made me tear up. All of a sudden he sat down in my couch, turned on my TV and switched directly to the cartoons. I observed him for a while. He was just completely focused on the cartoons. I just wanted him to enjoy the moment so I didn't say anything to him. I realized I had to call the facility to let them know. The caretakers arrived 10 minutes later. After a lot of convincing he got back up, crying. And they went back to the facility. I called the facility 2 days later. We made a deal. His name is Tom. And I now consider Tom my friend. Every Sunday from the day he returned, Tom and his caretakers visit me to watch cartoons. They say it's the highlight of his week. It makes my heart warm. Now. For several years my thoughts were let's not meet. Guy on my patio eating from the ashtray now my thoughts are let's meet every Sunday to watch cartoons. My friend Tom. Ro, you made it to the end. You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content more It's free and that's a great price.